Music is about to change forever. We're leaving stereo behind and entering the next dimension in sound with spatial audio featuring Dolby Atmos, a premium audio experience where sound moves around you, above you, and behind you. This is a completely immersive experience. If you're a music fan, it is like you're in the studio with your favorite artists. I'm Zane Lowe and I'm here at the legendary Capitol Studios and we're here to talk about this new evolution in sound. We have some real heavy hitters. True innovators behind the board. The godfather of Chicago rap, one of the most respected in the business, no ID. The incredible Sylvia Massey, a pioneer in adventure recording. And the master mix engineer himself, Manny Marikin. We're gonna be talking about Dolby Atmos and spatial audio and how this is going to deepen the connection between the artist and the fan. Good to see you. You too. How are you? Nice to meet you. You too. What's up, bro? How are you? Good, good. This is exciting. It's very exciting for me because being such a fan of, of each of you and the amazing work that you've done and what you've done for my favorite music and my favorite artists, just to be in this room is enough. But I'm exceptionally excited about the subject. Like we've seen music and everything change and technology change over the years, but we've been waiting for this one, right, Manny? Yeah, man. Well, thank you for inviting us. Having someone like yourself talk about what, you know, sound and the evolution and where we are in the world and what's ahead of us. It's, I'm sure I can speak for all of us, but it's an exciting time for us. You know, I think the idea of innovation is something that artists are always striving for. The idea of doing something new, something fresh, something that hasn't been done before. And, and I know that what got me into music in the first place was hearing something I'd never heard before, the idea of what was possible. And so I wanted to start this conversation by, by asking each of you, what was the significant moment in your life where you realized you discovered something that, that really triggered that idea of what was possible, like an innovation, a piece of kit? What was your toy? What was the thing that was like, this speaks to me, D? I would pick two things. I wouldn't pick one. I would, I would call it the turntable, Yeah. which just introduced me to listening to music and being able to change the speed and spin it back and, and not just listen, and then a sampler. Yeah. which is to be able to lift something off of there and be able to use it as a tool to create. That that was just a, okay, I don't have to keep learning the saxophone only or playing this piano only. There's, there's other things that are unexplored and it, and it opened me up to not being closed-minded about sound art. I mean, both of those really opened up the door to this revolution we're, ex we're experiencing now, which is the, this idea of, of young artists and artists being able to create in the immediate present moment on something that is at their fingertips and then distribute it direct to their audience. And that sort of all starts around that time. Um, Sylvia, the way you make things sound is so fascinating to me. And, and I, I feel like there's so many surprises in all of the mixes that I've ever heard you do. So I'm, di I'm dying to know what that moment was for you. Well, I think it, uh, one of the pieces of music that, I, that really affected me was um, the Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. It was so, uh, there was so much depth in it. Yeah. There was so much movement in it, and it was, uh, it really sent me into uh, suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. So that was the experience that, that really got me into the music. I was doing my own uh, music at the time, but the recording is, the recording studio was when uh, I realized that that uh, what the engineer does in the studio is very much mm. like uh, what the musician does. Mm. There was a device in the 90s called the Roland, um, the RSS, mm. the Spatial Simulator. And it was a, it had a brain, a rack mount brain and a little controller that you could spin these dials and it would simulate going around it didn't help the sound much. It kind of thinned out the sound. Uh, it was very early technology, but it, it was doing what I wanted it to do, and I used it on the Tool records mm -hmm. initially because I wanted that kind of surprise, and I would take little voices, and like on the Tool record, the opiate record, mm -hmm. uh, if you listen very carefully during one of the drum solos Danny's playing, mm -hmm. you'll hear a telephone ringing in the back, and that was the RSS. <laughs> I threw the telephone sound 
into the back of the room just to just to fuck with the listeners, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that you're, you're really getting into this drum solo and then you hear the phone ringing, I gotta turn down, it's like. I can imagine the tool with a perfect band oh, to yeah. experiment with on that level because oh, they yeah. sure like to fuck with the listeners. I Definitely. love them for it. Um, Manny, you know, yeah, master you know, mix engineer, I gotta know, like, where did it all start for you? <laughs> it, I was lucky enough to go to, uh, my high school had a studio and uh, it was, I was in production class, making a beat, playing some keys on the DX7. And my high school teacher said, now you gotta mix it. I'm like, what do you mean? What does that even mean? So uh, he took me over, over to uh, a board, uh, Ramsa uh, 16 by eight, and a Tascam eight, you know, reel to reel eight track. And he basically took the floppy into it and all of a sudden we recorded every instrument and we were ping ponging. And the fact that you were able to, I just played this stuff maybe 20 minutes before, and then he puts it through the desk and he's changing frequencies on the EQ and, you know, and levels and balances. And, and I will never forget that moment of just, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Because when you're able to change emotion with frequencies, you know, we talk about it all the time, but when it happens to you for the first time and you're a 15 year old boy, that just completely changed my, my course, you know, I wanted to be a drummer and then I'm like, nah, this is what I want to be. I want to be in the studio because it's, if I can change an emotion from someone else's, you know, art, that's pretty powerful. And I think we're blessed enough to be able to do that every single day of our lives, you know? I think that's a really important point about why we're having this conversation right now and, and, and focusing on this idea of what spatial audio is. Because to me, what struck me when I heard it for the first time was the way I felt. I realized it changed the way I felt about a song that I knew inside out, but I felt differently. I could put on Mats by Yeah Yeah Yeahs, or I could put on Black Skinhead or Bonnie Ver or Beyonce Record, and I could feel a certain way in stereo, and I'd sort of know it's gonna get me at that moment, right? Because you've all done great work, and that's what you're designed to do, is to get me at that moment. But I felt different. It just felt different, and, and, I, and I was experiencing a different emotional thing. Dion, I wanted to ask you how you know it feels right when you're working on something. Uh, we were having a conversation earlier and I was talking about do it wrong to get it right sometimes. And, and it's just about how it feels and versus the technical mathematics mm. that are stated to be correct. And as human beings, we just look for feelings all day. So I know when a record feels good because I can feel an emotion or I can feel something, so to speak, versus just listening to it or it being correct or it being uh, executed correctly. It's just really about feeling for me. So that that's the goal for me as a creator is to just create, use sound to create feelings, not just sound, but in this scenario. That's when I know it's correct. You know, it's a language that I think you have to be able to speak in order to translate. If you have an artist in the room who's searching for a feeling, Words aren't really the best way to communicate a lot of the time, and we all know that. It's a, it's a sensation almost that they're going for, and it's hard to put that into words. Sylvia, how do you, how do you know when you're on the right path with an artist? Or how do you translate that that language to try to achieve what the artist is ultimately trying to get to the point? It's all about the song initially and the intention of the writer of the song. So if you can maintain that and still create a beautiful frame around that idea, then that's, that's what we do. The idea of spatial audio, though, um, is exciting because typically when we listen to stereo, we have to kind of be in one spot. Mm. And, and we use the visual cues to, uh, to hear more than you even can imagine. So the idea of the spatial is to take those speakers right out of the room. You can close your eyes, and as we sit here in this room, I can hear the reflection on the back wall. I can hear over in that corner, and I can hear the space that we're in. So the listening experience for, for the audience uh, is really enhanced because suddenly you take those, those two speakers out of the equation and the entire room becomes the experience. Which is ultimately what I think it was Mozart was trying to achieve when he would create music and position the orchestra in certain points on the stage to make sure that that instrument reached that corner of the room and had a relationship 
with that instrument over here. It's all about relationships, isn't it? It's amazing. You know, it's funny you say, uh, imagine the, the conductor, right? I mean, he's got the sweetest spot in the room, right? He gets that energy from the orchestra, but then he also hears the acoustic room in the back. So to me, that's a, a good way to explain what's happening right now, because we, I think we can all, all agree that this is a sonic revolution. Yeah. Not since mono in the 30s have we gotten a revolution quite like this, yeah. right? Because stereo, and, and by the way, we've tried, I mean, not we, but we've tried with quad and 5.1, and you know, there's been more speakers and stuff, but I think for the first time ever, the consumer will finally get to listen to what we've been talking about and what we've been trying to achieve. And for me, it's simple, it's like, Am I listen, listening to the music with the stereo speakers or, or am I in the music? And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind on how now we have kind of the power, going back to describing the motion with the frequencies, now we may have the power to take you inside of it. And that to me is, it is a sonic revolution. And that's why we're super excited to be able to, mm. man, to dive into that world. And can you imagine now as, as creators, you know, now that you're That's creating the on that. Thing. What the creators, how the creators oh are going gosh. to create for it, for it not exactly. mix after the fact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's where it gets really, really exciting. Too. Yeah. But see, a lot of creatives, I'm sure, are asking you at this early stage, and I know I'm getting asked the same question, like, what is it? Like, what is it? And we talk about being immersed in it. We talk about the idea of music coming at you or, or being present in other parts of the three, you know, this kind of circular environment. But that being said, I think some people feel like it's going to land in music the way it did in cinema, which is like, here comes the jet engine. And it doesn't have to be like that. It can be super subtle and it can actually, you can do very little to achieve a lot with spatial audio, right? You know, just to add, the best way I can describe it in video is going back to the rabbit ears, right? The rabbit ear antennas. Mm. And then you fast forward to like 4K, right? I mean, it's still the image, but it's just very defined and you're in it now. I remember when they went from to HD, right? It was like, wow, you can see everything. And in video, that, that evolution happens so quickly, right? Well, that's about to happen in audio. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia, you know, you talk, you, you've talked openly about your process, you know, adventure recording. This is very much in parallel with that because it's, you're going out there and saying, okay, I could take that sound effect that someone else has created. I could go out and create it myself. I could go out there and see what it's like to be in the natural environment. What is that going to feel and sound like? So this must feel like a natural space for you to be moving into already. The idea of spatial sound is very exciting because I, I consider rooms to be uh, as important an instrument as the individual musicians and instruments um, in the song. So when I record, when I produce, I oftentimes will do field trips and we'll go into a cave or we'll go into the subway or we'll go into this cathedral because not only do you uh, enhance the, the sounds that you're recording, but your artist will give you a completely different perspective. Yeah. If they're singing in a studio yeah. or if they're singing in a cathedral, you're going to get a different performance. Yeah. I'm always amazed that more recordings don't take place in natural environments. And mm. I understand the idea of soundproof rooms and, you know, the burgundy and black check and the windowless environment, the standard kind of studio space. But it always just blew my mind. Like, why aren't we trying to move into an environment that's inspiring, not just the way it sounds, but inspiring the performance, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what's going to happen here is people are going to be performing their music differently and creating their music differently. Yes. I agree. Dion, what really drew you to it in the first place? Like, I know that you're a believer. I know that you love where this is going. What was it, the experience like when you first discovered it? Just opens up new doors. It's like, okay, you can do sing a note, and then you can have three people sing a harmony, and then you go, oh my God, there's the choir. Oh, the harmonies are cool. Yeah, there's a choir. Now the choir is doing three parts harmony. Well, what if the choir was here, here, yeah. here, here, and here? Yeah. What new feelings can I now generate? for people that haven't been felt. I got emotional the other day when I was listening to Latch by Disclosure, and I love Sam's voice. And when Sam harmonizes with himself, it's like kind of close to perfection for me. And they, the way that it just surrounded me, I felt like it was, I'd never heard anything like it, and it was really moving. And do you think throughout your life, thus far in your career working with artists, and all of you have worked with very innovative, very forward-thinking artists, that this has always been a place that, that 
those kind of artists have wanted to get to but just haven't been able to yet. Do you think so? Absolutely. So innovative artists are always looking to push the envelope, right? Uh, and I think this is going to be the perfect sort of segue to what that is. Now you have all these tools, all these new tools and new spaces and new uh, just where to go. Because with stereo, with two speakers, you're, you're just you're kind of trying to make the best out of it. And we've, I think we evolved into making really good records on two speakers. Uh, the exciting part now is that we don't have those limitations anymore. Because you always like, end up with with two channels, no matter how far no matter you want to take it, no matter yep. how much you want to pan, yeah. how, yeah. Much you want, no yeah. how much you want to do yeah. compression, yeah. reverb, delays, any of it, you always end up with these two speakers. But it's really, for me, what's really interesting is that I, I didn't, I haven't left the experience of discovering spatial audio feeling like I got cheated by stereo. I love stereo, mm. and I love all of the innovation, all the incredible work that's been done narrowing it down to two speakers. And these records that were mixed in stereo, all the records you've done and, and the millions of others that, that your peers have created over the decades are important. They raised me. I was born in stereo, right? Well, well me personally, I, I just always draw parallels. So if I just look at, you know, you can watch a movie at home mm -hmm. and that's okay. Or you can go to the theater <laughs> and that's just a different experience. And, and life, is the creator's role is to help create, use technology to create new experiences. So it's, it's not an either or, it's about expanding that functionality because you know we just happen to be at a point in time where we have everything in our hand and we can just listen. And sometimes it cannot activate as many senses as we would mm. want as a human. Um, so when you just give it a little more um, again, Canvas, you can now create different opportunities for experiences. And again, you know, we talk about those two speakers, but I know they know better than me. Like when you go to mix a record and you got to cram all this stuff and now you're slicing things away to make space for mm -hmm. things. And, and what if you just don't have to take away now? Now that you can just move it. And now it just breathes differently. It feels differently. And now it can be in different venues and different places because you don't have to overload these two speakers. Yeah, and, and that's the exciting part because then, you know, you get some of these amazing artists to now get in there and the new generation now starts creating and, and without the limitations that we've talked about, like you said, the, our limitations are how do you carve, how do you shape to fit it into this box? Well, now we don't have that limit, limitation. So can you imagine that as a creator where now you don't have to think about carving? Now the, the essence of that sound and those frequencies which moved you and which you wanted to go home and cry because for whatever reason it touched a certain thing yeah. inside of you, now nowadays you don't, you don't have to sh carve it or shape it or anything. It is the truest form because you have so much space. And that equals to emotional connection to that song, that artist, that piece of music. That's what I hope comes across the most, is that people, that we all acknowledge that there's a much, there's a deeper emotional resonance that we can get out of listening to our favorite songs. 100%. And don't get me wrong, I, I walk around all day going like this like everybody else, because yeah. I'm into immediacy like everybody else. It's part of my job is to be as up to date as possible. Mm -hmm. But I love how I feel when I listen to music in spatial. Well, genuinely, like no cell. Like I just love how it makes me feel. Look, I remember the first, you know, Admos mix that I worked on, and you know, I kept going back to the reference of stereo because I wanted my, my my approach was always to kind of do this, you know, yeah. and just yeah. make it bigger, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll never forget when I was toggling back and forth just to kind of stay true to the stereo uh, version. And remember feeling like I was in it, which is, I never, I mean, all these years, I never felt that before. And for us to get excited over something like that, I mean, the light bulb was like, oh, this is about to change forever, not only for creators, but for the consumer. They're gonna, again, it's a different experience. It's not replacing anything. Mm. It's just adding to that experience. And like you said, you may wanna stay home and watch a film this Friday, and next week you may wanna go with your friends and see it much bigger. It's not going to replace it. And I think that's really important to understand and remind ourselves that this is an amazing tool for I mean, everyone. The revolution is here. Yeah. I mean, it's arrived. And I think personally, any stereo mix that I do from here on out, 
uh, will also have an Atmos mm. version because it'll be set up. And I really believe that this is, um, this is the way the music should be. Should, be should have always been experienced. That's a powerful statement, you know, because it, it, it speaks, I think, to the thousands and thousands of artists who have been moving with technology but haven't been able to get ahead of it and make the most of it. And it does sort of feel, D, like anything is possible now from a creative point of view. Like I can imagine when you go into the studio now to help guide any creative into a vision that they have in their mind, that you don't have to say, give me a few days to try and figure that part out. This is the role of great tech, is to stretch our abilities. Like when we go in to create, we want we don't want to be told no. You know, great art sometimes is just throw it around. Cause you know, I grew up on mono. Oh no, I'm not that, I'm not that old. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at least in this stereo world, you know, it's, again, it's just always so many limitations. And I think um, people don't even know what, what is possible. And we lived under this narrative, like, well, people just listen to music on the phone. People just, you know, it's the MP3 world. It's a, if that's all we want to create, that's okay. But there will, you know, we will have to listen to that as this grows in, into another space at mm -hmm. some point. And we want to really not be limited by the, the prisons of the moment. So we might be actually able to, with Spatial now, and the help of the artistic community and incredible creative people like yourselves be able to actually stop music from degenerating sound-wise, turn it around and encourage artists to actually think about the way their records sound even more. Yeah, if you think about it, every technology has moved forward, right, except sound. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's right. we're at an MP3, which is probably the worst quality that we've you know, heard. So for the first time in a long time, yeah, now we can actually move forward. And I think we've all been waiting for this, for mm -hmm. this day for a long time, because, you know, like I just went back to HD. We're like, man, you can, everything's so much better, but audio is still not getting any better. I think this is the first sign of things to come, you know, and, uh, and when the masses understand and they feel it, we're not here to preach what it is. Just gotta hear it. Gotta when hear you it. hear it on your own, you're gonna be kind of you gonna you're gonna be hooked, and you're gonna want more of that. And the more of us that understand that technology now, the better music will get, not only emotionally but sonically. And that I think that's that's what we keep calling it a sonic revolution, <laughs> because we haven't seen this in our lifetime. I mean, remember when mono to stereo, Beatles put the drums on the left side and the bass on the right. We're not doing that anymore, but there's going to be a lot of experimentation, and there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to do that are not going to necessarily be good, but but it's here, at least we have that option, you know, and that's exciting. Sylvia, are you thinking with that in mind? I know that you love to record with artists in the room and you love to be as in the process as possible, almost like you're live mixing a record while you're making it or, or, and engineering that. Are, are you sort of think, starting to create with, you know, the idea of mixing in Dolby Atmos in mind? If someone's performing a vocal, you're thinking, I know exactly how I'm going to manipulate that in an immersive space. Yeah, it's it's exciting uh, to have the new format and because I'm um, I'm also a visual artist and I spend a lot of time painting, so I kind of approach mixing in that way where you know there's lines and then there's negative space and these are all important. While we're working in the mix, we're working in the Atmos and we're we're placing things, um, but uh, then the spatial um, finished mix mm. is. Uh, is like a whole new experience. I want to talk a little bit about the the relationship between the artist and producer, the artist and mixer, the artist and engineer, and and being in that moment when you're trying to facilitate and, and understand what they're trying to achieve, but you have to lead them into a, into a place where mixing in Dolby Atmos makes sense, moving and creating music that ultimately ends up being spatial makes sense. How do you approach that right now? Well, you know, um, to me, stereo. If I created the original mix. I want to I want to have that essence because the artist producer everyone signed off on that, right? So I want to tr tr try to stay true to that. Um, but imagine now the possibilities of creating it at most, right? Imagine that producer, the young, you know, up and coming producer that can now, 
you utilize space to create emotions and different frequencies and sounds. Now imagine the possibilities of that. We, you know, we talk, we always talk about stereo and the limitations of stereo as a creator. Now I can imagine some of those artists that I work with, if they had all those colors at their disposal, like right now it's may, maybe monochromatic and now we have every color in the palette. So it's new language. You, you, you have to develop now additions to the conversations you've already been having. A absolutely, but you know, that's what we did, well, not we, uh, but when it went from mono to stereo, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm sure there were a ton of conversations on how we were gonna utilize two instead of one. Now imagine how uh, for the last, what, 90 years, yeah. Creators have been performing with two speakers now now to be able to create this uh, Dolby Atmos It's gonna open up You know endless possibilities for creators. I remember the first time I went to Italy and I went to the Vatican and I saw the, the Sistine Chapel and I just see Like right. It's just like oh, I gotta walk over here and see it and and I, and I go why what did he th think when he had that much space? to to do, he couldn't just paint a person or, and it was just absolutely a whole new thought process, right? So I think it's, it's really, you know, important that like all of our creative minds kind of grasp what's possible with Dolby Atmos and spatial sound and all the different um, processes that we will, and tools so that we will use and then begin to rethink the product. Yeah, yeah. I think it's safe to say we're, we're all most excited about what's to come. Yes. The idea of new artists wanting to create and mix in Dolby Atmos from the creation point of view. But what is your your current attitude about, you know, going back and, and remixing in Dolby Atmos some of the music that you've already done? And we, we've talked a little bit about this, Manny. We've talked a bit about Dion as well. Sylvia, I want to know what your perspective is. Where would you start? And let's see if we can just pick one artist or one project. Where would you start on something you'd worked on that you would that you've been dying to do a Dolby Atmos mix in? I, I work uh, sometimes with a fellow named Amon Tobin, and oh, he's yeah. he's a uh, done music for gaming and films. So the idea of taking that artist and and his um, sounds are like no other person. He's creating sounds. It's all him, and now he's singing too. So to take that artist, uh, to take that music, mm. and with the Dolby Atmos, put it into this spatial world that we can all just kind of yeah. get a big hug out of. And there's so many other artists, like things that people that I haven't worked with, like Radiohead, I'm very excited oh, about man, that. I, think, I, I agree, you I know? think that, that band would, I think their work and what they do with Nigel Godrich and, and even you know some of Tom York's solo material would be incredible. Yeah. All right, I bought you guys some time. Who who gets the most amount of time to think about this? There's a you know one that comes to mind is like John Mayer's Continuum. You mm -hmm. know, it's like that's like a that album always we always described it as giving us a hug. When you mentioned mm -hmm. it. Man, it would be amazing to give it a real hug now, you know. So that 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 would be one of those albums that I would just love to revisit. You know? Or or like if, if the opportunity ever came up for like the Moody Blues, Days of Future Past, and that yeah. kind of experience. Or Dark Side of the Moon, which is oh. what started the whole oh, ball rolling. Man. Yeah. <laughs> right, get ready. But, I mean, Pink Floyd, they would they would have jumped at it, right? Mm. All right, D. Any album from I would say Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm. Yeah because the fact that it was already so much there. And just to have a band with that many people. Yeah. For me, it's just about taking those things that were more that kind of had to get cramped into a space and just kind of letting it fully It's breathe. true, Earth, Wind and Fire were reaching for the stars on every level. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, I've yes. seen them live and it was just, I, don't, I think that they were reaching for the rafters. Like. And maybe Bobby McFerrin. Interesting. Oh, weirdest thought that I would just have, no, that's just really to cool. know, like put notes all over the place and really Bjork. just. Oh my goodness. Bjork. Bjork. Mm -hmm. As somebody who, not dissimilar to Mozart, did a run of shows in churches and in acoustic environments with no amplification, just with the choir um, and no electronic instruments whatsoever, just voice in a church. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Like, Cigarettes. What I'm really looking forward to is taking the mix and having it just be Atmos or mm. just be spatial. Yes. I agree. 
That was great. It was really, really great to be able to spend this time with you. As I said at the beginning of our conversation, I'm such a big fan of your work. Um, but to be able to hear what the future holds, gosh, it's, it's time to be excited. I, I think artists and music is about to change forever. We've said it. I, tr I really believe it to be true. Um, and if you want to find out for yourself, then you can go and experience Dolby Atmos in spatial right now on Apple Music. Subscribers can listen to thousands of songs in a whole new dimension. It really is time to find out what the future of music sounds like.